So I've been uh, watching documentaries. For some reason, I can't read anymore. Like, I can read, you know what I'm saying? I can read and I can learn stuff by reading. But I have to be really interested to go read about it. Um, other than that, my mind isn't interested in a fucking book. Like, But I can go watch a documentary and the visual and like they have entertainment... Um, you know, it has entertainment value in it that a book might not necessarily have as much. So, like, if I watch a documentary, then I'm, like, way better off. But sometimes if I try to walk, watch a, uh, read a book, then my mind just wanders so much. And this is why, like, I want to go to college, but I'm not even sure if uh, I can complete it because of my mind. Some people have more of an artistic mind, you know? And sometimes they don't realize it, but, you know, they might not be able to complete school or go to college. And that doesn't necessarily mean you're stupid because there's a lot of people that didn't go to college and they achieved things more than a person with a degree ever, you know, than they could, than a lot of people with degrees ever could. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, you know, whenever you think about, oh, you're dumb, you're smart, whatever, you know, and there's really no shame in, in having like a, you know, working a low paying job or, or anything, you know? In fact, I see it as actually, you know, giving people respect for no matter what they do in the community because sometimes, you know, people are meant for certain things and sometimes they have the mind to do it and other people don't, you know what I mean? So you can't really blame them for that. It's just kind of the way they are. You know what I'm saying? Here's the thing about uh, capitalism, okay? Basically, people make, you know, we're free, so we're able to make a bunch of money. So, you know, you got these billionaires that can make a bunch of money or millionaires, whatever. And they become, they dominate the market. And then, you know, basically the spread of wealth is unevenly distributed so much. But we have to live in a free country, you know what I'm saying? We have to live by freedom. And, you know, corporations and massive amounts of wealth have been have been regulated and it's always been a thing. And, you know, it's kind of nothing new. But at the same time, it just, you know, and a lot of people know it, too. But it just fucks up the economy for so many people that, you know, aren't in that fucking great place that some people get. You know, and that's kind of the thing about capitalism is... So you have these people that are able to accomplish these things to get in such high uh, places of power in the world. You know what I'm saying? So they get in such a high place, make all this money they have, you know. It requires a certain type of expertise. It requires a certain amount of intelligence. Unless you just won the lottery. But I'm, I'm kind of talking about people that operate huge companies and businesses. You know, it can take a certain amount of intelligence. Uh, a certain uh, talent in decision making and... Um, uh, you know, and there is a lot of in-depth on the, the subject of business that not a lot of people really understand. Um, <clears throat> but that being said, I mean, just because someone else can't, you know, become that smart, can't learn, can't achieve what that person does, it doesn't mean they're lesser than a person, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of the idea that, that goes around is that the more alpha you are, the better you are. You know, one thing I've realized, though, is everything comes down to the alpha male in every aspect. Um, <clears throat> you know, and that's kind of the whole deal with not, sh you know, men not showing emotions or, you know, you know, you know, operating in a way that, you, you know, you're, you're you're making money, you're striving for more, you're doing all these things, you're <laughs> accumulating intelligence, which is a huge value and can be a huge asset. But, you know, that's all it's really ever about, you know what I'm saying, is this out, this concept of alpha, you know what I'm saying? And it turns a lot of people into these sort of machines, you know what I'm saying? They're not, they kind of turn into not real, they're not really real people, you know what I mean? And they don't really, you know, and they're kind of victims to it. They're kind of victims to the idea of the capitalist mindset and how serious people take it. Everyone's trying to offer you value, man. Whether it's educational, 
intellectual it's some kind of superiority that they have to establish with you whether it be through comedy relating to them them being charismatic which can cause them to be entertaining um <clears throat> and then you know and then at the end of the day or at you know when it all comes down to, to who's who and we play this game of who's who who's talented who's gifted who's smart who's strong who's this or that and that's what it comes down to and then when when all when all are gone you know when, when there's one that rises and that person's determined talented smart rich you know whatever the last person standing and that's just kind of the bullshit that our cultures are, are centered around things are interesting if they pose a threat or if they're comfortable and that's part of our like evolutionary mind is when you look at something it'll catch your eye if it poses a threat right like a cheetah or something or if it's comfortable say like a cute cat or whatever you like whatever you like what what do you enjoy how does that affect your mind when you look at it and your mind focuses on this thing so say you think of money you know that's all your mind is really looking at really ever and you know it's like when you know some some people it's like how can you get your mind to look away from that how can you look away because that's what all a lot of people are looking at most of the time you know what i'm saying and it's just like what kind of life is that you know what's fucking crazy is we have muscle movements that are based around cultures so depending on what you believe you will move a certain way you will think a certain way and you will operate in a certain way according to the culture that you find yourself comfortable in that you believe in that you're addicted to and that's part of the whole being a part of it so then you look at another person and the way they move you move too and that makes you feel good that makes you feel a connection but you don't really necessarily need that connection to feel good you can do your own muscle movements you can do your own you know culture you can live your own life where you think out of the box and do things that you weren't expected to do but you do them anyway because you're truly free of how culture has power over you does culture have power over you probably culture has power over a lot of people you know whether it be money drugs sex alcohol entertainment you know the whole idea of a stress-free lifestyle and how we get used to living our day and going home and doing the things that we do because we think we have to do them for, because our minds are wired like that because we don't want to focus on things that we don't want to recognize that we don't want to deal with that we don't want to come to terms with so our minds will zone out via entertainment music whatever it is that we can focus on and lose touch with reality but you know why should you have to lose touch with it why why are you so sensitive about it why is it emotionally affecting you why can't you see past that and just focus without letting things affect you? One of the most important things I've learned in the past like five years has been how to focus. <laughs> basically, it's basically an emotional concept where there's always going to be things that are going to, that can potentially hurt you emotionally, psychologically in life, depending on your connection to them and how you develop an attachment to them and what your current attachments are so people have kind of typical attachments to certain things and i don't really want to say typical but you know a, a a dog a person that you love you know yada 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 some kind of passion some kind of activity that you do that alters your brain emotionally and mentally but what you got to realize is is you need to be in control of that and not let things affect your emotions so much to where it's controlling where you're going to divert your focus to and so you can focus on what you want to focus on you know what's ironic how you see someone that's acting right you see these people there's a lot of these types of people man 
they can act, they can draw, they can write, they can do a lot of different things, like artistically and musically, um, you know, creatively. And some of these people, they start to understand what confidence really is and then that they can do whatever they want and it doesn't really matter. There's always going to be a critic. There's always going to be someone that's telling them that they're not good, that they're not worth it, that they don't like them. And that's just natural because a lot of the time there's going to be people that don't like you or aren't interested in you. And sometimes when they're exposed to you, they might say that they don't like you or something, but it's not necessarily true. That's why you got to keep your own ideal and you got to keep your mind together and you got to keep focused on what you believe in and what you know without letting other people affect you. You know what people are always, you know, there's always going to be people that are nice and will say nice things, but a lot of people are going to break you down, you know? They're gonna criticize you. Like most people will criticize you just by looking at you without saying anything to you. Maybe just by how, how they feel when they're around you or something. You know what I'm saying? And that right there just tells you how stereotypical people really are, how they'll just look at something on the internet and then they'll judge your whole life and everything you are because they think they know everything, but yet what have they done with their life? And even if they did something great, who are they and what are they doing? They're judging you and criticizing you and, and interrupting you and bothering you and stepping in your way and saying, I'm right and you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? Why would you let someone say, I'm right and you're wrong? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, why would you even conform to that at all? What are you doing, squirrel? Are you mad? The squirrel is pissed off. Hey, what are you making those noises for? Huh? What? What are you trying to tell me? Oh my God, I thought you were gonna jump on me. Hey, you can't leave me. Where are you going? Hey. You can't ignore me. Oh my God, a squirrel's freaking out. Look at him. Squirrel. Why are you freaking out? The squirrel's crazy, dude. Look at him. Oh my God. What the fuck? Don't let people assume an authority over you unless you want them to, unless that you need them to, unless it's part of your job, then you probably should. Now, in that perspective, maybe you should let people have an authority over you. You know, like in a relationship. You know, the reason why some people aren't good with relationships is because they're not good with authority. You know what I'm saying? They don't enjoy someone else pretty much telling them what to do or being a part of someone else's life to where they don't have full control over everything that's going on. You know what I'm saying? And so that can be part of the problem. So it can be either problem. Either you have a problem and you conform and you're okay with authority too much or you're on the other side and you hate authority and you, 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 you despise authority and you rebel too much. I know it hasn't been that long of a time and we should probably get more time to know each other and get to know each other and find out what we really feel but i think now is the best time more than ever to ask you will you marry me yes oh oh my god i'm so happy i'm so happy we're gonna have the best life together. We're gonna have the best kids, everything. I can't wait to spend my life with you. I'm so glad you said yes. I, I know we haven't known each other that long, but I know we're gonna be great together. I know that we were meant to be together the first time I seen you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. This is surprisingly a, whoa, shit. Fucking B, man.
fuck you. Oh my God, he's terrorizing me. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you, man. Oh my God. Fucking bitch. Get away from me. What the fuck is this fucking bee's problem? The f he's like, he's like chasing me off, dude. Okay. Um, maybe there's a, uh... oh shit. Look at these geese. Oh shit. Damn. I got a fucking geese flyby and a fucking, a fucking bee chasing me. <sighs> okay, well, I'm officially out of time for the very important thing I was gonna say. Uh, they're getting kind of loud. Uh, dude, these fucking geese are laughing at me. I swear to God. I swear to fucking God, these geese are fucking laughing at me. They're making fun of me, man. I'm not paranoid. I'm not paranoid. They're, they're fucking making fun of me, man. That's how much, that's how badly I am hated. Is I come to the park and even the geese fucking hate me. Even the geese make fun of me. That's how bad. And you know, I was thinking, yeah, that's how funny I am. I come to the park and I make geese laugh. No, no, no. I am so terrible and I am so hated that I come to the park and even the geese laugh at me and give me shit. That's how fucking terrible I am. Someone help me. This is actually a really nice view. So, you know when they were eating oatmeal in the Matrix? You know how they have the oatmeal? Oh, you might be too young to know what the Matrix is. Basically, it's this weird sci-fi music movie with this actor um, named... I'm not going to say his name because I'm not giving anybody any free promotions. No free promotions for anyone. Anyways, so they have this oatmeal that they eat. And they have these people that are in these incubators. And anyways, you'd have to watch the movie. So... Is the oatmeal grinded up corpses from the incubator babies? Or you know how they like die in the Matrix, they die in real life. So they die in their little incubator. So are they grinding up? Where are they getting their food? That's what I'm trying to wonder. Like, did they grind up the people into, into this weird oatmeal stuff? And that's how they get their food? They eat the incubator people? I just, you know, thinking, brainstorming. Oh my God, I just realized how good a water background looks in a video look at that if i had like a lake in the back this duck's talking shit if i had a lake in the background man is it like mountains and shit oh man you almost like move there so you don't here's the thing like you get rich off tiktok right and you're like okay i'm gonna move somewhere where i can have a mountain scene in my background every time so you drive like five minutes away right and you have this fucking big ass fucking mountain scene in your background and it's fucking incredible and you use that as the background like this see see those mountains see that look at that look at this background man it's all about the background you know the background makes you a millionaire that's what makes you the background this duck's talking shit Look at him. Look at him. Oh my God, look. What is he? Is he trying to get a fish, dude? Is he trying to get a fish? What are they doing? Oh my God, look at him. What is he grabbing? Oh, that's sick. I usually don't see him do this. Wow. Check him out. Oh, he's going deep. Look at him. Oh my God. Oh, look, he got something. Is that a fish? What was that? They don't eat fish. They eat like seaweed or something, right? Oh my God, he's diving. Dude, this is awesome. Discovery Channel. Wow, cool. These ducks are fucking diving over here, dude. 
That's a cool uh, name. That's a cool name. Diving Duck. Duck Diver. It sounds like a gamer fucking tag or something. Duck Diver. So they like going down and getting seaweed or something? Like what? What are they doing? He's trying to find hinted treasure. That's what he's doing. Yep. He's looking for those gold coins. Scrooge McDuck over here. Yep. It's a duck. I am close to the duck. Oh, I scared the duck. The beautiful little ducks on this National Geographic feature. They like talking amongst themselves. They are very cultured. They don't like the same music other humans do. But they like to bang their beaks on the rocks sometimes. They like to make musical synergy, an orchestra, if you will. You can see the chip in his beak. It's from vigorously banging on wood and rocks, playing a jingle around the campfire last night. Yes, he's probably the drummer, and he's probably the guitar player right there. Very musical gifted creatures they are. Very musical gifted. You know what's weird? I never wanted to hate anybody, right? I never wanted to hate anybody. But things happen in my life, right? To make me hate. And I never wanted to discriminate, right? I never really felt like I was discriminating. But, you know, I was still in a... I was still pissed off, you know? Especially, some, you know, some people, some situations just... You know, you just have to disarm it. And that's why it's just like, you know, any any hostility, any any conflict that I don't like, any uncomfortability, you know, I just cut it off anymore. I, I don't deal, I don't put up with anything anymore. And it's all really about feeling good. But that doesn't mean I have to ever like everyone and everyone has to like me, you know what I mean? So, but, you know, I never really wanted to hate everyone. I never wanted to hate anyone. But I can't control if other people hate me. So, you know, I just want to feel good. Yo, you know what blows my mind? It's how people get famous. Not just a little bit famous, dude. Because that's the thing is, people freak out. People freak out about, you know, oh, you got 100 likes or you got 20 likes. You know, whatever you get, it's like, okay, you know, that's... Or say you even got like 10,000 likes or something or 10,000 views on something, right? If you look at all the people on the internet... It's really not that much, really. I mean, you would probably have to get at least a million or something. Even a million really isn't that much, you know what I'm saying? Compared to everybody on the planet. But it just blows my mind how some people do that. Like, how the hell? What, like, what's going through a person's mind? Like, how do you get yourself to the point where you just become like this celebrity or whatever? It's, it's so fucking weird how people do that I said it before and I'll say it a million times I wish you know what I'm saying like I wish I could win the lottery I wish I could be you know what I'm saying I wish but really I mean I think a lot of people kind of overhype it and they kind of like they think too much about it. Like it, they, it ruins, like they hesitate and shit. They procrastinate. It makes them get scared when they think about it. It's intimidating for them. So they, it, they can ruin it before it even happens. You know what I'm saying? And really, I mean, even if you did get it, you gotta keep it. And even if you, you are the one of the ones that can keep it. I mean, it's just gonna become everyday life. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I don't really, I think people kind of have a weird way of looking at it and they don't really understand it really, but I can never fail. I'll never fail. I can't fail. I've succeeded. I've succeeded at believing in myself. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> There's always gonna be conflict. There's always going to be people along the way that are going to try to 
oppose me. Whatever, dude. I'm not trying to control anybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, whatever, man. Chilling. Just making videos. I guess I like it. Is it because I didn't get enough love as a kid? Maybe. But I guess that's none of your business. I don't really need a reason why. I don't really need a reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. I shouldn't need a reason. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't need a reason to do what you do. We, the people, meaning we, the followers, the people that follow me, we are going to take over the internet. Yes, we. And even though my lips are a little bit chapped and there's a person sitting in their truck over there, possibly hearing what I'm saying when I don't want them to, and the, the background gets really bright on the iPhone, you can see how it's white. See how it's white? It's terrible. It's terrible. Look how white it is behind me. Even though all this is going on and I have an itch and a bug literally just flew in my mouth over there. We shall take over the internet. We shall take over the internet. So what are the chances? What are the chances? What are the chances of someone becoming some kind of, uh, what do they call, you know, like a celebrity, you know what I'm saying? Like a famous celebrity. What are the chances of that shit? What are the chances? Like five billion to one or some shit? That's why I'm not even worried about it. Okay, I'm worried about it, all right? I'm very worried about it. Can't you see it in my face? I'm so fucking worried about it. I wish it could happen for me. I don't think it's gonna happen though, you know? But you never know. Who knows? I think I've talked too much shit on Twitter to be accepted into the mainstream world. I don't think they'll accept me. Um, I think I said too many rude things. Uh, but I was acting and I was you know, joking, but, you know. I, I am nobody. I am nobody. Nobody, nobody. I mean, like, it's, I'm not saying it in a bad way, like, oh, I'm nobody, right? But I'm nobody, but I'm somebody. Everyone's somebody. But you know, I'm just some guy. Nobody. It's okay. I'm not right being nobody. I'm somebody, but I'm still kind of nobody. I don't really have a point. But it's okay. I'm all right being nobody. There's nothing wrong with it, man. I, I should feel good no matter what. Feel good, no matter what. You know what the thing wrong, the thing that's wrong with uh, our competitive nature? So our competitive nature, like, you go up against someone in some way, so we compete against each other uh, with our smarts, with our looks, you know, for money, for fame, for, uh, you know, music, you know, all these other, you know, athletics, you know, physical, mental, you know, emotional. Like, there's a lot of ways that we compete in every single way possible. But what I realize is I don't have to feel bad if I'm not the best. I don't have to feel bad. I don't have to be relevant to what other people are making real about me. You know, I don't have to feel bad. You know what I'm saying? I could just live my life and be who I am. I don't have to feel bad because I failed, because, you know, I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to participate. I just infiltrated your dream. I came into your dream. Tonight, when you're dreaming, I will be in your dream. Now, but seriously, I had some weird dreams, man. I had some dreams about my friends, three of my friends. I had dreams about them, and they were really weird dreams, but they were really vivid. 
but I don't really talk to them anymore. I don't really hang out with these particular friends. I don't hang out with them anymore. And it's weird because I almost feel like it's a part of me letting them go. But, you know, I'm thinking about everything I did wrong. And some things, I mean, you know, I was, I'm not, I'm a pretty decent guy. But, you know, sometimes people have to learn lessons and they take shit too far. But sometimes they're too stubborn and they never fucking learn how to, how to, how to act and shit. So I don't know. Dreams. I'm starting my biggest star in the world campaign. So since I've been getting so many followers and I discovered that I'm a popular person and I, people have liked my stuff over 330,000 uh, times, I'm starting a new campaign to be the biggest star in the world. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> so all you gotta do is follow to help the cause Actually, that sounds kind of selfish. Wow. What a dick I am. Nonetheless, I'm still starting my biggest star in the world campaign where I'm gonna try to be the biggest star in the world. You can help me. Regardless if you help me or not, I'm still gonna try. I don't care what anyone thinks. I'll still try. I'll still try. I'll still be me. I'll do me. You can help if you want. It's crazy, you know, because I wanted to be rich and famous so I could get revenge on people, you know, because, you know, there's been a lot of people that have hated me and said mean things about me, you know, not just online, but in real life, you know, girls that rejected me and, you know, they, and, you know, you don't have to talk to them sometimes, you know, sometimes you just know what a person's thinking, you know, that you just know that there's so much hatred that you just assume that they just think that way. And I really wanted to break away from that, but you know, it turned into this thing where I tried so hard and then, you know, I became a millionaire and I got all these followers and I became this famous actor and everybody knows who I am now. And, and it's like, I don't want to live that life anymore. You know, I don't want to live the life because I'm trying to hurt other people or get revenge. You know what I'm saying? I just want to live a life of love and happiness. And all the money doesn't matter. But even though I'm a millionaire, um, you know, that really doesn't give you, like, it can give you friends and shit, but some people will just use you, you know? And, and, and you know, it's like, girls didn't like me before. Like, they weren't really interested in me, you know what I'm saying? And there's only certain girls that are, uh, you know, they, they know what love really is and they know what, uh, being a person really is and other girls you know they're just gold diggers and they they don't really care and if you look at a lot of those girls that are with some of those famous guys you know they're they are just with them for the money dude it's basically prostitution it's it's not real love man and and a lot of people operate like that and i can't even really say i blame them or anything if that's the way they want to live but you know that's what it turns into so i just can't live that way you know, anymore, you know, even though I'm a millionaire. It was nice being a millionaire for a while, you know. When I first, when it first happened and I could buy anything I want, it was nice. You know, because you could buy whatever you want and everything. And people, you know, you know, you got back at some people, you know, they thought you were going to be a failure and you turned out to be this huge superstar, you know what I'm saying? Just such a big influence in the world and they, they see you. You know, I'm sure like some of them see, you know, some of them notice me, you know. And I don't really ever hear of it, but you know, you, you know that like I popped up on their phone or their TV or something because I'm such a big super millionaire star. And you know that they seen me and they're like, oh my God, I had no idea that this guy, you know, out of all the people, you know, it's always that guy that you don't think it's gonna happen, you know, for, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I was that guy, you know? And now I'm just like, it's almost like I'm a freak, you know, like I'm a different kind of person. And I have to deal with that, you know, just how, why me? You know, why, 